You can watch Walt Wednesday live on Twitch every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Visit www.elevastreams.com for more information. Hello! Welcome to the first episode of Walt Wednesday, your favorite Disney talk show. I am your host, Jazz Ocho. And I'm accompanied by my bestest friend in the whole world, Burnby. <laughs> uh, on this show, you, you we will be giving you all the Disney news that you didn't know you needed. But trust us, you need it. Ever wondered what happened today in Disney history? No, not really. Never thought about it, but now that you mention it, I am curious. Don't worry, we got you covered. Also, each week we'll be covering a different Walt Disney movie. For instance, where the origin of the movie came from and how Disney changed it to make it their own. We will also be asking you some questions. Do you like trivia? I know I do. Uh, Do you live anywhere near any Disney parks? Or near any major cities? Um, if so, we will be talking about different events going on. Uh, what's your opinion about the newer upcoming Disney movies? Are there any? Uh, I don't know, but we will see you later. Welcome. Welcome to Walt Wednesday. Wednesday. So, welcome everybody. How are you all doing today? Hopefully you are fantastic. Uh, I guess we should probably start with we want to talk oh, yeah. about. Oh, uh, we have a giveaway we are doing today. Hello. <laughs> so, Brett, talk about the lovely, lovely giveaway. Uh, we're giving away a Steam B yep. or a uh, Uh, lovely uh, game Soul today. Uh, Soul Calibur 6, I believe, right? <laughs> yes, Soul Calibur 6. Um, if you want to enter in the giveaway, you have to be present to win. So just do explanation point Snow White in the chat, and you'll be uh, entered. So, All right. Brett, so, you want to get started? Yeah, uh, we're going to start off with the Disney news this week. Uh, of course, major announcement came quite a while back, and major thing happened just in the past week or so. Disney Plus came out. Uh, one of the biggest things on the news right now is about their disclaimers on movies. It states, this program is presented as originally created. It may be outdated cultural depictions. Uh, it's placed on things such as uh, Jungle Book, Aladdin, Dumbo, Just a few different movies that at the time were, uh, I guess, a little different depictions of everything than how you would see it now. And they just don't seem right for the people that they were supposed to represent. That's actually really interesting. Um, I I kind of like how they're putting the disclaimers just so nobody gets, like, offended at all. Um, or for uh, the younger gen- generation to, I guess, not. Mm, I don't know how to word to it. To not believe these. Yeah, there you go. Things that were thought think of the as, word. as truths before, but aren't yeah. really. Um. Well, are there any other movies that they had the disclaimers on or anything? Or is there any other Uh, news? I know there was Snow White, Jungle Book, Aladdin, and Dumbo, I believe, were the ones that they were on. Yes. Uh, And that's about as much as I was able to actually find. There's not much Disney news other than Disney Plus. Everybody's just so pumped about Disney Plus that they knew that they couldn't really try and schedule too much else or it would get overshadowed by this. I mean, it's just gone over 
it's made headlines all over. So, I mean, I'm happy they came out with Disney Plus. I can watch all the Disney movies. All the old ones that you loved love watching growing up and all the new ones that they're I still making now. Lion King. I can watch Lion King like 300 times and nobody can judge me. <laughs> no one will be, everybody will be none the wiser. <laughs> right. And Brett, you can watch your lovely, lovely Star Wars. And all the Marvel movies. Yes, all of them. In order. We can <laughs> understand the story. Whichever order you want to go by. Mm, that too. But, yeah, let's move on. Um, so, each week we're going to be um, telling you what happened in, on today's date. So, November 27th in Disney history. So, what happened on November 27th in 2013 Frozen. The first Frozen came out, and its budget was only $150 million, but that movie made over $1.2 billion. It was so hyped. Everybody needs to just let it go, but then it came back. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody let it go. And speaking of Frozen, uh, Frozen 2, for its debut, made $53 million so far. That's crazy. Which is also the best ever for Disney animated films. Is it? I think that's just uh, in November. That might be. I'm pretty sure it's just in November because there's five, uh, four others ahead of it. I don't know which movies they are, but... That's what I, whatever I read on how much they um, made. They said it was the top for November. Um, also, something else happened um, on November 27th. In 1957, the Disneyland TV series aired an episode called How to Relax. Um, Goofy, which is voiced by Pinto Kolvig, who also voices Grumpy and Sleepy, explains that mankind's eternal desire to relax since prehistoric times when cavemen discovered his thumb. He unfortunately discovered a work too. I don't like to work. <laughs> Which robbed them the, of the ability to relax. So Goofy attempts to discriminate discriminate numerous times numerous methods oh i can't talk tonight for encouraging significant time for leisure i was going to show you guys a clip but i could not find any i looked and lurked there's no clips of it and i was kind of sad about it not on disney plus either <laughs> but right, so uh yeah go ahead uh for the first episode of walt wednesday as you probably guessed with the giveaway we're going to be talking about Snow White. Just a reminder, don't forget exclamation point Snow White is our giveaway. Uh, it was the first length animated film. And it was Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. It premiered at Arthay Circle Theater on December 21st, 1937. So we're only about a month away from that actually being the exact uh, anniversary for it. But it was released in the U.S. on February 4th, uh, 1938. The budget for Snow White was $1.49 million, which Walt Disney actually had to take numerous loans and ask several people he knew to get the money for that. And they ended up making about $8 million in 1937, which for any math nerds like myself... It translates to $418 million in today's money. Now, think about it, guys. Back in 1938, going to the movies didn't cost as much as it does now. It only cost 10 to 15 cents to go see a movie. So, Literally just pocket change. Yeah. Imagine 
how like how many people had to go see this movie to make eight million dollars? Math nerd, do math. <laughs> That's what I was just doing. <laughs> um, also, with Snow White, it, it took them a little bit over three years to develop the movie. Um, back then, it was all hand drawn. So, I believe I read. You don't quote me on it, but six uh, pages they uh, drew in color um, made one second of the movie. And the movie's roughly 80 minutes long. You get the math yet, Brett? Uh, If I am mathing correct, which I could be a little off right now, it's about 80 million people would have seen that. In. Same. That's insane. Yeah, just imagine eighty million people watch it, and you only manage eight million dollars in today's standards. That would sound a little fishy, but back then that was, you know, that's. Crazy. I mean, it was still a lot of money. Oh yeah, that's. But it would have been a little money. strange to hear of that. Or it imagine wouldn't have been how, strange. Imagine how Walt Disney felt about that movie. That's where he got his big break. I mean, Mickey helped too, but you know, Steamboat Snow White, Will. Disney, Disney's great. Uh, um, so, do you want to go right into how Disney came up with the idea, sure. or in this case, how he modified the story to create Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? Yeah. Um. Well. Um. Disney came up with uh, the idea by uh, uh, by a book that was written in 1812 by the Brothers Grimm. Um, there's this big German word that I forgot how to pronounce. <laughs> so we're going to attempt. Um, Chevinchen, I believe is how it's pronounced, but it means Snow White in German. Um, Snow White is a German fairy tale that again came out in 1812. So I'm going to tell you pretty much kind of a summary of how, of the story. So we can begin. And in the beginning of the book, a queen sits sewing by an open windowsill during the winter snowfall. The queen pricks her finger with the needle she's using to sew, and three little drops uh, fell on the freshly fallen white snow on a black window seal. She says to herself, I wish I had a daughter that had skin as white as snow, lips as red as blood, and hair as black as ebony. Um, sometime later, the queen gave birth to a daughter. She named Snow White. But sadly, the queen passed away just a small time after giving birth to Snow White. A year later, Snow White's father, the king, remarried. Why would you remarry in a year? Don't you have time to grieve? But you know, it's fine. It's a book in 1812. <laughs> Not like today. Um, the um, the king's new wife is very beautiful, but she is a vain and wicked woman. She practices witchcraft, and the queen possesses possesses a magic mirror. She goes to every morning and says, "Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all?" The mirror always tells the queen that she's the fairest. Uh, she is always very pleased because the magic mirror never lies. But Snow White grows up. She becomes more and more beautiful each day. Eventually becoming more beautiful than her stepmother. When the queen asks the mirror and the mirror tells her that Snow White is now the fairest. This gives the queen a great shock. She becomes envious. And from that moment, her heart turns cold. 
and grows hatred. Her hatred increases with time. Eventually, her anger, the angry queen, orders a huntsman to take Snow White into the forest to be killed. As proof that Snow White is dead, the queen demands that he returns with her heart, which will she will consume. Uh, in order to be as beautiful as Snow White. So, let's pause for a second and talk about why would you want to eat a heart? <laughs> like, gross. Is it? Go- is she going to cook it? I want to. I need details. Okay, I need. I need details. Well, you need to remember back in this time, <laughs> uh, they still. I don't believe even had like full doctors medicines and they still use plenty of home remedies well yeah so it could have been seen that by consuming a portion of something that is beautiful it would make you more beautiful ah my ears were falling down (laughs) (laughs) uh yeah i guess that would be about right that's the only logic I can put behind it. But she's it. also a witch. So she could just do like a potion and another potion and then bam, it's a magic heart. Be like Kingdom Hearts. But magical. <laughs> um, well, we can... you have any more comments on it, Brett? I can't really think of too many more reasons why you might have attempted that. I mean, really, granted to us, there's not really hardly any logic behind that. This is true. Granted, it is a fairy tale. You gotta remember it wasn't a true story. I don't think. (laughs) Coming over a cold. Forgive me to cough. Um, So, the huntsman took Snow White into the forest. After raising his knife, he finds himself unable to kill her. When Snow White finds out about her stepmother's plan, she tearfully begs, "Uh, Spare me this mockery of justice. I will run into the forest and never come home again. The huntsman agrees to spare Snow White and brings the queen a heart of an animal instead. I imagine being the queen and just how happy do you think she felt whenever the huntsman came and brung her a heart of an animal? Because she believes it's Snow White's. Like, imagine her joy. I don't want to imagine it, but I kind of, I don't know why she wants to be the prettiest, because who cares about looks? It's all about personality, baby. (laughs) (laughs) um so snow white went out into the forest and wandered for a few for hours snow white discovers this tiny little bitty cottage uh, that belongs to a group of dwarves since no one was at home she eats from tiny little bitty bowls and drinks some of their wine rude (laughs) and then um she tests all of the bed. Finally, the last bed is comfortable enough for her to sleep in. When the dwarves come return home, they immediately become aware that there is somebody in their house. Um, because everything in their home was uh, in disorder. Prowl, prowling around frantically, they headed upstairs to discover uh, Snow White. And Snow White wakes up, explains what happens, and the, just explains to them everything, like, why she's there, the queen's trying to send somebody to kill her, and stuff like that. So the dwarves took a little bit of pity on her, let her stay, in exchange for housekeeping. Uh, they warn her to be careful when she's alone. And let nobody in while they're working in the mountains. I mean, if I was at a strange little cottage, I wouldn't want to talk to anybody if somebody came to my door in the middle of the woods. Like, 
that might be is a little the mailman awkward. like that would be awkward don't you think like just kind of being out in the middle of nowhere and having guests that doesn't seem like normal. something that you would expect guests out of nowhere i should say it's 1812 people i guess live everywhere <laughs> i don't know i don't know what it was like back in 1812 that was too long ago over 200 years ago neither of us <laughs> were alive back then right. <laughs> okay ears stop being mean um anyway the queen she believes that snow white ha- is dead and once again asks the magic mirror magic mirror on the wall who is the fairest one of all the magic mirror tells her that snow white is still the fairest in the land the queen is furious like beyond angry when she learns that snow white is still alive and decides to the kill the girl herself that's rude um she uh, uh, she appears at the dwarf's cottage disguised as an old peddler and offers Snow White a colorful silky uh, lace laced um, what, were the, what was that word? What are those called? Bodices? Bodices. What is a bodice? I want to know. Is it like a scarf? I think. I think that's what it is. Like, right? Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Well, we'll just go with the scarf. Research. It's fine. <laughs> it looks um, kind of like one of those, uh, you know, Renaissance women, whenever they have that little vest type thing that goes down to about their waist, that goes up over their shoulders. Oh, that thing. Okay. Yeah, it's one of those kinds of things. I guess you have one of them. Uh, okay. Cool. Uh, she gives it to, her as a, uh, to Snow White as a present. The queen laced her up so tight that Snow White faints. Uh, the dwarves return home just in time, and Snow White gets revived. Um, the dwarves loosen the laces. Upon hearing from her magic mirror that Snow White still lives, the queen dresses as a uh, comb seller and convinces Snow White to take this beautiful comb as a present. She brushes Snow White's hair with a poison comb. The girl faints again, but again is revived by the dwarves. Then they remove the comb from her hair. The magic mirror informs the queen once again that her attempt failed. Uh, And Snow White is not dead, so the queen disguises herself as a farmer's wife and offers Snow White a poisoned apple. Snow White is hesitant to accept. I mean, I would be too. (laughs) Um, So the queen cuts the apple in half and eats the half. That is harmless. Of course, right? Um, The what? that side is white. I don't know why an apple would be half white and half red. And gives the red poisoned half to Snow White. Uh, the girl eagerly takes a bite. Falls down unconscious. And this time, the dwarves are unable to revive her. Assuming that she is dead. And place her in a glass casket. Why did it take the queen three attempts to kill the poor girl? Well, she didn't die, but still. <laughs> Well, probably because she may not have known of the dwarves, or at the very least did not consider them in her planning as being smart enough to take care of it. I mean, the, uh, I have to take my headphones. I couldn't have my ears on. My headphones were hurting my ears, so I have to take them off, sadly. Figure something else out. Um, but, yeah. I see that too. But she knew she lives in a dwarf's cottage. So why didn't she think the dwarves liked her? Well, she could have assumed that maybe since they live out in a cottage instead of in the kingdom, maybe she assumed that they aren't educated. And if they aren't educated, then, you know, what else are they? 
What else? What would they do? It's not like they would understand. And if they're all male dwarves, they may not have known how to use uh, that first thing. It was the... Uh, uh, yeah. So it's think, like... Uh, what is think it of the called? name of uh, but that thing, they may not have known how to take that off of her. Like a corset. They, what it's like. Maybe her hair was so, she had so much hair that she was hoping that they wouldn't find the comb in it. Maybe. Huh. Yeah, I guess that'd work. But anyway, let's continue with the story. Three days later... A prince stumbled upon Snow White laying in her glass coffin during a hunting trip. Why is a prince going hunting? Nobody will ever know. I guess back then, you'd go hunting, right? After hearing her story from the dwarves, the prince allow, uh, uh, the prince is allowed to take Snow White to her proper resting place. Um, there are two different versions of this next, uh, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, there's two different versions of how he takes her and why he takes her or how he mm -hmm. revives her and stuff like that. Sorry, I just like spoiled it, but, um, <laughs> the, yeah. There's the first edition, and then there's every other edition after that was created. In the first edition um, of the book, Snow White was carried to the palace without a mishap, but uh, later a servant got frustrated by the inconvenience caused by the prince's uh, fawning over her that he hits the body dislodging the apple. Um, in later editions, Snow White was transported, and one of the prince's servants trips and uh, loses his balance. This dislodges the piece of the poisonous apple from Snow White's throat, reviving her. So, like, they're similar. I like the first edition better. <laughs> <laughs> just, because, <laughs> just because, like, I want to know why he's so frustrated. Like, I understand. Like, why do you think a dead body is inconvenient? Like, I mean, where's your empathy? <laughs> but maybe the prince had been very demanding of his servants that day. And to this servant, it's like, we've done so many things already today for you. And now you ask us to carry a, uh, you know, coffin, a glass coffin with somebody in it that you've never met, don't know anything about. I mean, it could just be like he was already on the edge and just that constant weight from carrying the uh, all that glass and the body and everything. It just made him snap. He snapped like a little twig and got angry. <laughs> I'm angry. hi -yah! Like, uh, but at this point, the prince is overjoyed and declares his love for Snow White. You just met her, dude. You just met her. But uh, Snow White agrees to marry him. The Snow White and the prince invited everybody to their wedding party, including Snow White's stepmother. The queen still believes that Snow White is dead. Uh, again, asked her magic mirror, who is the fairest in the land? The magic mirror says the prince's bride is the fairest. Not knowing that the bride was her stepdaughter, the queen arrives at the wedding to investigate. Bros with her rage and fear, she tries to uh, uh, sow chaos, but the Prince recognizes her as a threat. He orders that she wear a pair of red hot iron slippers and dances with him until she drops dead for attempted murder of Princess Snow White. Go Princey. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
also, it states uh, somewhere in the story, I couldn't find exactly where, but in the in this version, Snow White is 16 years old. So back then, it was okay to marry that young. Nowadays, no, don't do it. <laughs> uh, kidding, of course. Um, so, what are your thoughts, Brett, on the original story? Uh, I mean, you can see where the name Brothers Grimm kind of falls in with it. Some of it can be considered a little grim. Uh, but I don't know. I think that the queen could have found much better ways to deal with this rather than just straight up, oh, I'm going to kill you. Right. She could have, you know... Just move. Well, I guess surgery wasn't an option back then. Yeah. But as you age, you're going to start losing some of that quote unquote natural beauty that she would have had. Well, if she's such a good witchcraft person, couldn't she just turn herself into Snow White? Yeah. If you're a witch and you're able to cast spells, you could just make yourself look better. Just like bippity boppity boo. Poof, you're Snow White. Like, I know that's a whole different movie. But, you know, it's fine. My thoughts on it are pretty similar to yours. This is why we're best friends. We don't disagree on much. But um, my opinion on the whole story is I think it's a little gruesome to be like a child's story if it's supposed to be a fairy tale. But fairy tales back then weren't supposed to be for children like they are today. Um, I do like um, how they kind of implemented the a witch. I like how they implemented her as a witchcraft because I guess back then there was a lot of rumors about witchcraft. Lots of people were trying to practice it. And I think that's really neat. Um, the eating of the heart still kind of grosses me out, but intrigues me at the same time. Uh, but I really wish they would have chose something else other than a poison apple. Like uh, for a poisoned pineapple? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Poisoned pineapple. Like, why not a poison pumpkin pie? <laughs> it's the same. What about poison corn? Poison mashed potatoes? I don't think they had mashed potatoes then. Poison potato. <laughs> This is Minecraft now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now it is time for Disney trivia. So we get to ask you some questions. Are you guys ready? F and chat if you're ready. <laughs> anyway, I'm waiting until I see the F and chat. Hello. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway. Uh, so, for the first, first question. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Brad. Uh, what year did Pinocchio come out? Uh, You get points for this, by the way. I'm tallying them up. Or Brett can, actually. Yeah, sure, I'll tally it up. You can take care of the uh, answers. Anybody have the answer? I see nobody with the answer. The year Pinocchio came out is in 1940. You also would have got bonus points if you would have said... The action, the date it came out. It came out on two different occasions, February 4th and February 9th. We like the date February 9th, guys. It's my birthday. <laughs> 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 All right. Next question. Um, what are the names of the three Aristocat kittens? Not 
the first two, not Duchess and O'Malley. The kittens. There are three. You get a point for... Anybody? Anybody? No? Mm -hmm. Well, all right. No points. You guys are rude. <laughs> <laughs> um, the kittens are Berlioz, Marie, and Toulouse. Uh, I believe Flo Cosmo got in right before you said it. Really? With, oh. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, we can give it to him. <laughs> Two points. <laughs> All right, can you do this one? How old is Cinderella? Okay. Good Googling, Zaz. I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. No, she's not 14. She is actually 19 years old. Yep. Zaz. Uh, all right. So our leaderboard for today was Flo Cosmo with two points. Two point. Zaz with one. And uh, TIE Fighter sitting there at negative one mm. for the 91. Oh, man. <laughs> You got it backwards, Ty. All right. Now we're going to move on to the Disney's version of the story. And we're going to watch um, the trailer that they made for Snow White first. And we'll move on. Well, that was that. Uh, what was your guys' opinion on that trailer? I would love, love, love to know. Um, I liked how they did the trailer. It wasn't like giving away too much, and it was leaving you on the edge of your seat. And I loved how they do the magic mirror in the movie. That is probably my absolute favorite. And I like how the queen looks. So, what's your opinion on the trailer, sir? <laughs> sir? Uh, well, I mean, like you said, I like that they don't <clears throat> give away a whole lot. Like, that's one of the things that I think movie trailers now do too much, is they give too much away at the beginning. So you know too much of what's going to happen as you actually get into, or as you're walking into the movie theater, you already feel like you've got, you know, a good portion of it that you know what's going on. So I think they did a great job making it to where you didn't know too much, but it, I feel like they could have added just a little bit more somewhere else to yeah. make it to where you had a little bit more of an idea, like maybe at least, like they could have shown the audio for that, start off with that and then have the audio going on and they actually show Snow White at one point. 
Yeah, but it, they might have thought, let's give the illusion of a D- Disney princess. What do you think she looks like? Or something. Yeah. I don't know. Like That would have been a very good business plan, actually. To have it set up. You know. <laughs> okay, businessman over there. Okay. <laughs> if we, we get, get them trying to imagine what she's going to look like, then yeah. they'll want to come just to see her. And not just to see the movie. Because then they'll have that full surprise instead of just that little bit that they're wondering about. Like, they want to know the story, of course. But if they don't know what she looks like, then that's going to cause them to... Some people will want to come just to see that, whereas others are coming because they're excited to see the movie. Right. Alrighty. Well, I feel. That's a big feel. (laughs) But... Excuse me, dog next door, please. I'm <laughs> trying to run a show here. I'm sorry if you guys hear that. <laughs> anyway, uh, tell us a little bit about the movie, Brett. Tell us all about it. All right. So you in the Disney version, I'm sorry. There's spoilers here. Oh, I mean, it's been out for how many years now? Like a lot, but you know, Zaz might've not seen it. Sorry to call you out Zaz, but you're in here and I love you. I'm just going to go ahead and guess. Uh, it's probably an older movie than everybody who is in chat right now. Yeah. So anybody watching this, if they haven't seen it, they've had enough time to be able to look at it. Yeah, I know. I just want to let people know. Anyway. So, uh, the Disney version of Snow White Uh, Snow White is a lonely princess living with her stepmother, a vain queen. Queen worries that Snow White will be more beautiful than her, so she forces Snow White to work as a scullery maid and asks the magic mirror daily, who is the fairest one of all? One of the most famous lines from the movie, if not the most famous line. And for years, the mirror always answered that it was the queen, which, of course pleased her vain personality. Uh, One day upon asking the mirror, it informed her that the queen, or informed the queen, sorry, that Snow White is the fairest in the land now. The jealous queen orders her huntsman to take Snow White into the forest and kill her. She further demands that the huntsman return with Snow White's heart in a jeweled box as proof of the deed. However, the huntsman cannot bring himself to kill Snow White. He tearfully begs for her forgiveness, revealing that the queen wants her dead and urges her to flee into the woods and never look back. Uh, She was lost and frightened, though the princess is befriended by some woodland creatures who led her to a cottage deep in the woods. In the cottage, she found seven small chairs uh, in the dining room. She assumes the cottage is or she assumes the untidy cottage is home of seven orphan children and not just seven dwarves uh in reality they of course are the seven dwarves that the cottage belongs to named doc grumpy happy sleepy bashful sneezy and dopey who work in a nearby mine hey brett you know how after I eat, I sneeze a lot? Yes. I think I would be a perfect sneezy if they ever did a live action, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they just have to feed you a lot beforehand. Exactly. Like, if I eat, <laughs> like, I sneeze, like, a million times. It's hilarious. It's Brett just claims I'm allergic to food because if I eat, I sneeze. Uh, okay. Sorry, I had to. So, upon (laughs) returning home, they are alarmed to find their cottage clean and suspect that an intruder has invaded their home. They find Snow White upstairs, already asleep, across three of their beds. Because no individual bed is going to be long enough for her. And uh, she awakes to find them at her bedside and introduces herself. I think, personally, if I was to wake up and see that, I would probably freak out, even knowing that people were supposed to be coming home. Right? Just imagine uh, little 
things looking at you and then <laughs> you wake up and it's like yawn oh my goodness look at all these things around me <laughs> what do you do there's still people well the dwarves or little children as she still thinks so children because, with beards <laughs> i mean later on she's just all like oh, you're not little children at all with her little high-pitched voice and everything little men and then little giggles and then she pats him on the head and i'm like not me wouldn't be me but anyway sorry uh <laughs> excuse me so she wakes up to find them at her bedside and introduces herself and all of the dwarves eventually welcome her into their home after she offers to clean and cook for them snow white keeps the house for the dwarves while they mine for jewels during the day and at night, they all sing, play music, and dance. Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work we go. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do, hi-ho, 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 hi-ho. Right? Uh, meanwhile, the queen, back at the castle, not knowing that the huntsman had not done the deed, <coughs> discovers that Snow White is still alive when the mirror again answers that Snow White is the fairest in the land and reveals that the heart in the jeweled box is actually that of a pig. Rude. <laughs> Just rude. It could have been bacon. <laughs> I mean, you don't know what they used the rest of the pig to make. Uh, so the queen used a potion to disguise herself as an old lady, and she creates a poisoned apple that will put whoever eats it into... Sleeping death. A curse, she learns, can only be broken by love's first kiss. But is certain Snow White will be buried alive. While the queen goes to the cottage, while the dwarves are away, the animals are wary of her and rush off to find the dwarves. Uh, Uh, anyways, uh, faking a potential Did heart attack. Did you space off there for a minute? Uh, yeah, I thought I heard something outside. Oh, uh, okay. It's fine. I uh, was like, concerned for a second. I was like, Brad? <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave me alone here! <laughs> well, unlike the queen, I won't be faking a potential heart attack. Oh, just... Uh, uh, she God. tricks Snow White into bringing her into the cottage to rest and then fool Snow White into biting into the poisoned apple under the pretense that it is a magic a a apple that grants wishes. As Snow White falls asleep, the queen proclaims that she is now the fairest of the land. The dwarves return with the animals as the queen leaves the cottage and give chase, trapping her on a cliff. She tries to roll a boulder over them, but before she can do so, lightning strikes the cliff, causing her to fall to her death. The dwarves return to their cottage and find Snow White seemingly dead. Being kept in a death-like slumber by the poison, unwilling to bury her out of sight in the ground, they instead placed her in a glass coffin trimmed with gold in a clearing in the forest. Together with the woodland creatures, they keep watch over her. A year later, a prince who had previously met and fallen in love with Snow White learns of her eternal sleep and visits her coffin. Saddened by her apparent death, he kisses her, which breaks the spell and awakens her. Dwarves and animals all rejoiced as the prince takes Snow White to his castle. Uh, in this one, she is actually 14 now. That's a little young to be kissed, in my opinion. Just saying. She's a little baby. Well, do we know how old the prince is, though? Maybe he was about the same age? Maybe. I don't know. I know nothing. Uh, I, I don't think they had an age for him, to be honest. But you never know. Um, but the difference between... There's like similarities and differences. The queen only uh, took one attempt to get Snow White, not three. 
There's one difference. Um, uh, well, the difference is in the age, too, but, you know, that's the age. Who cares about age is just a number, you know? <laughs> Uh, kidding, there is, kidding. there's also the difference of how the queen died That's and how true. the prince met, well, when the prince met Snow White and how he found her. Right. Because in the beginning of the movie, you see uh, Snow White in raggedy little maid clothes and she's singing it to a whale. I was going to sing that song for you guys. I really was. And then I got sick. I can't, <laughs> but it was, um, what was the song called? Someday my prince will come and then she was singing it. And then he comes along and magically hears her and climbs over the wall, creeping into the castle area and starts singing with her and scared her and made her run away. And then she sang about how much she loved him later. I, you ran away. <laughs> okay. Makes sense. Let me tell you. <laughs> Princesses make sense. No. <laughs> anyway, um, instead, it wasn't just an animal heart; it was a pig heart. Pig heart? I can't words. Um, I don't know. Was there any other differences I missed? Um, I believe in the original. The Huntsman did not break out into tears like he did in the Disney version. True. When he couldn't right. manage to kill her. Right. Instead, she feared uh, big for her life instead of the Huntsman begging for his. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> ah, well, that's fun. Don't we just Disney, you you make everything so happy. <laughs> um, well, which version do you guys like better? I want to know. Let me know. Do you like the original better? Tell me why. Do you like the um Disney version? Tell me why. Me personally, I like the original story better. Uh, it has more. Um, I guess. Action? Is that the right word I would use? Um, has more um attempts of <coughs> trying to kill Snow White, I guess. Um so you enjoy more attempts on No, her I'm not trying to say I'm like horrible person. I'm not. Like I don't enjoy people being murdered. I don't enjoy that. Nah, nah. I ain't about that life. Um <laughs> <laughs> but I just I, thought I'd clear that up real quick. <laughs> thanks. Um, I'm not a bad person. Swear, I've <laughs> never killed anybody in my life. Uh, I've never poisoned nobody with no apples, or combs, or tied no. them up, or put a corset on too tight. But I've had somebody put a corset on me too tight. Hmm. I almost fainted. Um. Uh, that would be a horrible way. Just imagine being strangled from your sides and then dying or not being able to breathe and suffocating because your lungs are like touching each other. Yeah. This one's fun, right? Uh, but I don't like, I don't know. No. I like witchcraft. I think it's an interesting thing. Not saying I'm in, like into it. Do it. No. Bad. But I like reading on it and like all the stories back in like the times, like the Salem Witch Trials. I enjoyed whenever we went over that in school. Um, just I read up on stuff like that. I find it interesting. But has anybody answered which version they like more? Uh, it looks like Lo Cosmo said he prefers Disney. However, he thinks the original is cool. Neat. Awesome. Um, I don't know if I'm... Alright, I don't see too many others, though. Okay, that's fine. 
Don't talk to me, chat. It's fine. Um. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're gonna get into the cast. All right. Um. As you see on the screen, um, is Snow White and Adriana Casalotti. Uh, she is a dis. She was sorry. She was a Disney legend, among the first to ever speak lines as an uncredited actress in a movie in the movie industry. So I guess she would say, "No, be in it. You don't have to credit me." Me, I'd be. I want credit. I did work. Like, I ain't about that life. You're a better person than me. <laughs> um, she was born on May sixth in nineteen sixteen, and she died on January eighteenth, nineteen ninety seven. A little over a year before I was born. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the evil queen. Uh, Grimhild, I believe, was played by Lucille Laverne, Laverne and is most famous for being the first Disney villain. Uh, she was born November 7th of 1872 and died March 4th of 1945. Need a Frito Dorito. <laughs> um, now we'll move on to the lovely, lovely Prince that showed up at the beginning of the movie. And at the end, woohoo, go Prince. Uh, his name is Harry Stockwell. Uh, he claimed his fame by being the Prince in Snow White. Um, he was also a noted Broadway performer. In 1943, he uh, succeeded Alfred Drake as Curly. And the lead role in Broadway's Oklahoma. He remained that remained that role until 1948. He was born on April 27th, 1902. That is also that is my grandma's birthday, not 1902, but 27th, and died on July 19th, 1984. <clears throat> All right, let's pause for a second. These characters look like look like the actress. An actress is an actor. I don't know if anybody else noticed that, but I noticed it whenever I was getting the pictures. Like, they're extremely similar. Like, the way the... Like, I don't know if she tried to look like her, or they based it off her, but I'm assuming they based the character off her. The queen, that's the only picture I found of her. It's not a very good, clear picture, but you can see kind of the cheekbones are kind of the same. And like the way her head is shaped, like just the way the facial structure is with her and the queen. Now the prince, yeah, he's just a good-looking dude. He basically looks like all the other princes of Disney. So, you know, <laughs> they're not very original there. <laughs> I mean, he was the first, so he set the standards for all the Disney princes. Yeah, look at me. Here I am. I love me. You can tell me that Disney movie. Uh, Actually, Pixar. Eh, they worked on it together. It's fine. Now, moving on to the lovely Seven Dwarves. All right. So, the dwarves were... Uh, Doc was played by Roy Atwell. Grumpy and Sleepy were both played by the same person, uh, Pinto Kolvig. Yep. Uh, Happy was played by Otis Harlan. Sneezy by Billy Gilbert. Bashful by Scotty Matra, and Dopey was played by Eddie Collins. However, since Dopey was mute, it was only vocal effects and not actually, of course, a real voice since never he didn't spoke. Talk. Yeah, like I thought that was really cool. That I thought there was literally just all special like sounds. I didn't know he actually had a voice actor. Um, I thought that was really, really, really cool. All right, carry on. All right. <laughs> so the magic mirror, uh, shown on the left, was played by Maroni Olson, and the Huntsman, which would then of course be on the right, 
was played by Stuart Buchanan. Yeah, Nito Frito Dorito. These guys don't really look like the characters, but I mean, they like, okay, I believe the prince was in the movie less amount of time than the magic mirror. Yeah, he is one of a, a main character. The magic mirror is not. Logic? Hello? <laughs> I didn't see any logic there. But there are some upcoming upcoming coming events um, that might be near you or around an area you might be interested in going or whatever. But join Mickey Mouse and his friends at Disney on Ice. Uh, Mickey uh, is searching for a party. A brand new adventure filled with world class skating, high flying acrobatics, and unexpected stuff. It will be all at, in the yeah, words in Denver, Colorado, at the Pepsi Center on December 5th. I'll just throw in real quick there. If sure. I go there and they serve Coke, I'm going to be very disappointed. It would be a very misleading name. <laughs> Sir. I'm disappointed in you. It's like, yeah. Yeah. You're good. All right. So another upcoming event is uh, December 14th. You can sit down for an intimate lunch with Disney legend Tom Nabb. Uh, perched high on the third deck bow of the scenic Paddlefish Restaurant at Disney Springs at Walt Disney World, Florida, and learn about Tom's nearly 50-year career in Disney's theme parks. Imagine working for Disney for 50 years. That'd be Specifically fantastic! Specifically in the theme park. I want to be a Disney princess, but guess what? You have to be a size 5 or less. Never will I ever be a Disney princess, but I can be Ursula. <laughs> I was Ursula for Halloween, and that was a fantastic one. I want to go join Disney and be Ursula. I mean, there's a life goal. Yeah, I can't make my voice sound like Ursula, though. I've tried and tried. I do a great stitch. I don't do a great Ursula. You know, it's fine. Alrighty, let's move on. Well, there's only one Disney movie that is coming up that I have found or have heard of. It is called Spies in Disguise, and it releases on Christmas Day. That is a Wednesday, but we won't be live that day. So you can spend that time with your friends and families and go see this movie and tell me how it is. Um, we're going to watch the trailer. You ready? It's good time to introduce myself. Just, just three ounces of pressure to the Vegas nerve, and then, then look at your boy, Sleepy Night Night. Lance Sterling, a legendary spy who's always dressed to impress. Walter Beckett graduated from MIT at 15 and works in the tech innovations lab. There are so many gadgets I want to test in the field. For example, the inflatable hug. Kind of a personal protection device I've been developing. This is a vile waste of taxpayer dollars. This is your next objective. None of our agents can get close to him. It's called biodynamic concealment. Imagine if I can make you disappear. Hey, Lance, look at me. Look at you? I can see my butt and your face at the same time. That is so cool. Being a pigeon can make you an even better spy. Pigeons are everywhere and nobody notices them. In fact, Pigeons can see in slow motion. That was tight. Did anyone else see a, um, a, a pigeon? 
And pigeons can fly up to 92 miles per hour. Don't you throw me off this roof! He'll figure it out. All right, Kimura. Starting. It's about to get messy. Time to go sleepy night night. I miss my hands. I gotta stay. We have different skill sets. That's what makes us such a great team. Walter, you're squeezing too. Oh! What happens in the submarine stays in the submarine. Remember, guys, what happens in the submarine stays in a submarine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was actually a really good trailer. Um, I kind of want to go see it on Christmas now. I'm still not much of a opening day movie kind of person. Oh, I know. I know you. <laughs> I definitely right. would prefer to wait till... Uh, Probably at least week two, just because most Disney films, especially more humorous ones like that one, seems like it'll be. Uh, it's probably safe to say that by the second week, there won't be yeah. anywhere near a full crowd. At the very least, there should be under half a crowd. Right. If you don't come with me on the opening day, I'm going to make you go sleepy night night. <laughs> anyway. Uh, viewer question time. I saw that Mr. Tofu asked me to do my stitch voice. Why do you want me to do my stitch voice? But I will, just because you specifically asked me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I need a drink before I do it, because it will kill my throat. But... I do it for the kids at work all the time, and they just laugh. They they can't get enough of it. But I'm Hanuman's family. I'm family. There's nobody left behind to forget. Full fashion, boy. Hello, Mister Tofu. How is the door? Yeah, fun, fun, fun. Uh, no, I can't do a stitch voice. <laughs> I am a six to a six. Um. <laughs> but, you know, I have I, my profile picture on Twitch is me in a stitch outfit, and my doggy is named Lilo. So we've got Lilo and Stitch already. All right, let's do that one soon. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So are there any viewer questions you want to ask us about Snow White or about the show at all? Yes, no, maybe so. Did it do? Up, I did down, just left, right. Upside down and sideways? Uh, diagonal. Horizontal, vertical. vertical. <laughs> the hypotenuse of a triangle? Uh, oh, zigzag. The zigzag? Boy was oh, yeah. able to throw that one zigzag. out there for us. Z -z Zoom. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> If there aren't any questions, um, next week we are going to be live again on Wednesday at 7 p.m. EST for Pinocchio on December 4th. So if you enjoyed this, I'm sorry if we did bad. <laughs> <laughs> but if you enjoyed this, uh, stop by and watch us again on next Wednesday. Um, we do have the giveaway. If you're not in the giveaway, you have like 30 seconds to do explanation point. So I, before we get on into the giveaway or soul caliber six.
Oh, we've got a question. What, what character what? are you the most like in Snow White? Me, Sneezy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, Sneezy is one of them. Um, but I probably, to be honest, I would be Dopey. Dopey is so adorable, and I want to be as adorable as him. Like, he just has this big, huge sweater on. His hands are always, like, hidden, and he has no beard, and he's bald, and he's just so cute, and he just shakes his head, and he can do get away with any, like, idiotic thing he wants to get away with. And it's the greatest, because... I could, like, steal all the diamonds and nobody would say anything because I'm dopey. And then I'd go be rich somewhere and live in a castle. You know, it's fine. Brett, what about you? I'd probably be grumpy. You, no. Yeah, I don't see you as grumpy. I'm just closest to out of all the characters, I'd say probably grumpy. I say Doc. You kind of look like a Doc. It's the classes. All right, fine. Yeah. No, now I can't see. <laughs> no, I can't see. I'm a blind. I was going to try taking it off, but everything just turned to blur. So, uh, Was there any more questions? Uh, Zaz Dad, Dad. asked if we will be covering the mouse himself. Um, if you guys like this series enough, I already have the uh, movies planned for this like season. But if you guys like this enough, I will bring it back for a second season and we can cover the mouse himself. If uh, it's what you're into, or if you're into this anyway. But um, I know Mickey Mouse has been around for over 90 years and Mickey and Minnie are not married. Why? I don't know. I don't know even know. He's if really, uh, he's really taking his time getting that ring. <laughs> really though, if I was many, I, I guess... left a long time ago. Goofy, oh. I leave. I need you. Oh, How what? many rings do you see that are mouse sized? Especially, well, I guess they can find gloves that are mouse sized. So, That's about and right. shoes, and shoes, those big, huge clown shoes. You know, is there any more? Would like to know about Mickey? Oh, yeah, yeah, we can learn about Mickey some more whenever. One day, is there any more questions? Uh, Don't worry, Shar, we're going to learn about Jiminy Cricket next, next, next week. <laughs> and how if you lie, your gross nose, your nose grows. <laughs> your gross nose. <laughs> Gosh darn it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and for the answer to the stream that we're watching now, the uh, comment from that. Yes, I'm excited for Sunday streamer spotlight at 9 p.m. Eastern. Ah, yeah. Eastern yeah. Standard Time. Let's get my boy over here to affiliate, guys. If you haven't already, go hit him up for follow. You see his name? It's right above. It's in the Mickey Mouse ears. Not the Minnie Mouse, the Mickey. You don't know the difference, the one without a bow. You can also hit the Minnie Mouse ears, too, if you want. If you She's want got some to. good content, too. Uh, Mr. Hey. Tofu wants another voice. Another voice? Do you like have what? anyone else that you're good at impressions for? Hmm. I can do some Pokemon. Well, we want Disney characters. Uh. Can you do a uh, Mickey uh, voice? Maybe uh -huh. Donald? I can do the ho-ho. <laughs> that it. Ho -ho. <laughs> I can't do it on the mouse. Sorry. Uh, rip. Rip Rodies. How many people's up? Are, are we back? Are we back? <laughs> Mr. Tofu with the mm. puns. Well, <laughs> the 
<laughs> there we are. There we go. It's all better now. Um, I can't. All right. I, uh, hi, welcome back. Hello. We uh went to go get a drink real quick. So <laughs> it's fine. We. Yeah. But are there any more questions or anything about Snow White or maybe any, like, hmm, I don't know. I don't know. I can't words right now. I just worded everything. <laughs> but, um, what? Um, Let's just do the giveaway time, huh? Yeah. Remember, explanation point, Snow White. I was trying to remember what we were here for, why we were still here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, I think everybody had more something. than the 30 seconds that you promised, though. Oh, yeah, I know, you know. Okay, what is it? Here we go. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? Who has the magical Mickey touch? It looks like hey, our Mr. Winner is Mr. Tofu. Look at you, my guy. You gotta chat and chat in order to get it. You got huh? Ooh, where, where? It's Mr. Tofu! Tofu? Tofu. Mr. Tofu. We have Mr. Tofu in the house. Tofu. Nobody wants to eat tofu. Hey, he really wants to eat tofu. You need to chat in your chat. Chat in the chat. He's going to eat tofu. He's hungry. He's hungry for that tofu booty. Oh, well, sorry. Anyways, we get to re-roll. Sorry, Mr. Tofu. All right, let's try this again, shall we? Mm -hmm. right. Who is yeah. it going to be? Oh, Red, Red Fox, 15. Fox 15. Come on right. down and claim your prize. You're going to get eaten if you don't claim your prize. <laughs> get eaten, you can't play the game. So then we got to oh. yeah. respin it. Where, where's the Red Fox? Yo, nobody wants to eat foxes. Like, that's, that's, that's sad. They're so cute and cuddly. How are we gonna do? Oh, uh, no. Aww. Dang, guys, I thought you were here to support us. Well, I guess not. <laughs> you keep Everybody started bailing before the big giveaway. Right? They got fed up with us. All right. They couldn't handle the pressure of the giveaway. Right. <laughs> couldn't handle the uh, pixie dust that we were throwing on them. Oof. Who's gonna win? Oh. There's oh. a oh. Ooh. You always end up winning giveaways, sir. Now, are you actually gonna win? Will Zaz show up to claim his prize? Will that show up to You talked right before. Yeah, right. Is he gonna be here? Wait! <laughs> huh. Who do you give it to? Aw, oh, you're so sweet! <laughs> you are so sweet. Give it to Flo. <laughs> How awesome. Aw. Alrighty, well. That's great.
we're gonna bippity boppity boo it right into are you on our discord no somebody have to whisper to him maybe we'll figure it out yeah. but uh -huh. we can we have an amazing discord community which is part of this channel if any of you want an interactive discord that will make you feel welcomed and elevate you to be amazing like all of us are join our discord because we would love to have you also we do other um talk shows and stuff on this channel feel free to give it a follow and Definitely follow because Streamer Spotlight every Sunday at 9 p.m. EST. Mr. Um, uh, Brum, Brum Vibe is going to be on it. Okay. And uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell. Yeah. Adios. We'll see you guys next week.